let's talk about physiologically why you could have brain fatigue. There are two brain networks, major brain networks that are working, okay? And they generally only work one at a time. You have what's called the executive network, and then you have what's called the default mode network. The executive network is focusing on the tasks at hand. The executive network is saying, I am doing a math problem, I am dialed into this math problem, I'm doing an exam, I am dialed into this exam. Right now, I'm talking to all of you. I am not thinking about anything other than what I'm gonna say next. I am 100% dialed into the task that I'm doing. The default mode network is your self-talk. It's, okay, what do I have to get make for dinner tonight? You're in your own mind. It's what's also known as, in the psychological world, as the ego. It's your sense of self. It's your time traveler. It's what allows you to think into the future, to plan ahead, but also to feel anxiety and stress about things that haven't happened in the future. It's also what allows you to look back into the past and feel sadness or potentially depression about a current situation that you're, you're in or things that have happened to you in the past or even trauma that's been experienced, post-traumatic stress, that type of th stuff. So your self-talk can be very motivating, powerful, or it can be very detrimental and it can set up blocks and barriers that don't actually exist or things that you may perceive to be barriers, okay? Most of the things we think about and worry about don't actually happen or are not actually real. They're fabrications of the default mode network or the ego, the sense of self. And this is often what comes into um, the mental health aspect of things, it's the self-talk, okay? Now, both of these networks should not be active at the same time, meaning that if I'm doing an executive task, like talking to all of you, doing my math problem, whatever it may be, my default mode network should be completely shut off. So I'm relying on my executive network. Now, if I'm not doing an executive task and I'm just daydreaming and thinking about whatever else is going on and planning for the future, yada, yada, I'm on my default mode network and they kind of shut each other off, okay? People with concussion, persistent concussion symptoms, but also people with anxiety, people with generalized anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, people with um, chronic pain uh, and stress, chronic stress. When they do studies looking at fMRI, okay, fMRI will look at oxygen signals and oxygen uptake in certain tissues of the brain. And so it can tell which networks and which areas are active based on the amount of oxygen those areas are using and uptaking. Um, so they can see you know, brain activation patterns, what's going on. Now, when they give normal, healthy people a, a task, it's executive network starts focusing on the task, default mode network shuts off, task is over, default mode network comes back on. People with anxiety, stress, persistent concussion symptoms, post-traumatic stress, um, chronic pain, all that type of stuff. When they're doing their executive network task, when they give them a task to do, their default mode network stays active. So they're unable to, to perform the task well. They do poorly on the cognitive task, okay? They're not reacting quickly. They're not able to concentrate on the task itself. They're getting the answers wrong. They're not remembering things appropriately, okay? Because their default mode network is active. You can't perform a task if you have the self-talk coming in and disrupting what you're trying to think about. Not only that, but when you have activation of both networks at the same time, you're burning twice the amount of energy. So your cognitive abilities are gonna suck and you're gonna burn more energy and be drained way quicker than you normally would. Okay? Now, studies recently looking at people with cognitive self-reported cognitive impairments so people that have had that have memory impairments or um, concentration difficulties or things like that they this one study that was there was a couple months ago I'll have to look at what the reference is I can't remember off the top of my head but they they separated the groups and they randomized them to either receive psychological intervention cognitive behavioral therapy or 
cognitive rehab where they're actually like, oh, you have a memory problem? Let's work on your memory. Let's give you memory games and things like that to do, concentration games, things to improve your concentration or your memory. And then this group was getting cognitive behavioral therapy, which is strategies around you know, problems in thinking. The group that had the psychological intervention did much better, statistically significantly better than the group that actually had cognitive intervention. So why is that? Okay, The purpose of a lot of therapy is to tap into the ego, to control the self-talk. The purpose of meditation is to shut down the ego, shut down the thoughts, clear the mind. The purpose of um, like mindfulness, right? Mindfulness based, based meditation is focus on what you're doing, focus on your breathing. Because when you're focused on your breathing, you're not focused on the self-talk that's potentially negative and holding you back. So people that are experienced meditators are able to shut this down. People that have chronic stress have an overactive ego default mode network, okay? There's studies going on right now looking at hallucinogenic drugs. Psilocybin, magic mushrooms, LSD, and MDMA. And they're using it on soldiers that come back with post-traumatic stress disorder. And they're using it on people with incurable anxiety. Um, I shouldn't say incurable, but intractable anxiety and depression. Other treatments have failed completely. Other medications have failed completely. And they're doing guided sessions where they have a therapist in a room and they give people a high dose of psilocybin mushrooms and take them through a meditation experience. People with um, cancer patients with end of life anxiety, they're you know obviously fearful and anxious about death. And they'll take them through like a, a psilocybin guided um, therapy session and completely in one session wipe out any anxiety that they had. So these, these studies are showing that in one session you're getting 10 years worth of therapy. And we don't really know why or how it works but one of the, one of the key um, thoughts or theories is that these drugs actually quiet the default mode network. So again back to our fMRI studies. FMRI is looking at activation of the brain. Like researchers thought that we would see this crazy ballistic activity going on within the brain everywhere, but actually what they saw was that there was a lot of activity going on in the executive network, but a complete dissolving of the default mode network. So it just completely shut off. So what the theory is, is that this is allowing therapists to completely tap into uh, an undisrupted um, default mode network gets completely shut down. So you can get really deep on some of this stuff. But it's very interesting that you can get rid of anxiety and get rid of depression and get rid of uh, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder by quieting down the default mode network. Okay, So this is where mental health concussion recovery becomes so intertwined. You believe that you have memory impairments, concentration difficulties, all these things, but how much of that is inattentiveness? I walked into a room, I can't remember why I'm there. Well, it's not that you can't remember, it's that your self-talk distracted you with some other thoughts that were creeping into your mind, okay? And a lot of patients now are off work, have lost their disability, have, um, you know, their, their, they don't know what to do for money. They may be stressed financially with bills and all this stuff. And I know that that's a ton of people out there right now. So all of that stress is going to keep your default mode network activated, which then prevents you from focusing on the task at hand, which is your executive network. So oftentimes with patients that have this neuro fatigue, they will always describe that their concentration, memory, cognitive, all this stuff. But a lot of times it's, it's we need to look at the psychological piece. I often will refer people for therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, uh, to their physician or psychiatrist for medication to try and reduce the anxiety, reduce the self-talk, reduce the default mode network to be able to then focus on the task at hand. And oftentimes that's the one component where patients aren't willing to go there because they believe this is not me, this is not psychological. It is psychological because concussion will do this. 
Concussion can increase the anxiety, increase the stress, increase the post-traumatic stress, which then activates this default mode network. And we need to find strategies to quiet it and bring it back down so that you're not having two systems working at once, you're able to focus, and you're not burning double the energy that you normally would. So, pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so for anyone out there that's, that's having these issues, I would definitely encourage you to seek therapy, meditation, mindfulness, anything to try and de-stress and quiet the default mode and think one strategy I've been giving, this is like a Tony Robbins thing that he always does and I, mean, I love Tony Robbins. Um, the one thing that he always tells people is that you cannot feel anxious, you cannot feel stressed, you cannot feel any negative type of emotion when you're also feeling gratitude. So one thing that he'll get people to do is if you focus on things you're grateful for, you're immediately quieting the anxiety, stress, things that are happening in the default mode network. Okay, I'm stressed about my job, which is preventing me from thinking straight. It's all I can think about it. I'm up at night because I can't shut my mind off and I'm spinning and spinning and spinning. So I get a shitty sleep. I wake up in the morning feeling like shit. I'm fatigued. I'm drowsy. All these things. Okay. But if you can then change that thinking into what are three things that I feel absolutely grateful for. Okay. That can quiet things down and potentially just reframe how you think about stuff.